Hello, my name is Troy from Extract Craft. In this video, I'm going to be explaining purge mode for our Eto Pro Ethanol Recovery Unit. In addition to the information I'll be providing here, you can also check out page 11 of the user manual that's downloadable on our website, www.extractcraft.com. So now let's kind of get into it. What is purge mode? Why do we use it? and all the intricacies of the actual function itself. As you can see on the control dial there, there's a red arc and a green arc. The red arc is for extract, the green arc is for purge. Extract mode is primarily for ethanol recovery and oil production, while purge mode is a post-production option to further reduce the residual ethanol in your end concentrate. So when do we need post-production purging? and purge mode. First, it's not necessary for all botanicals. In fact, it's not necessary for most botanicals. Typically, this mode is used for uh, end products that are destined to be either smoked or vaped. Second, you can, some people who have an acute uh, ethanol sensitivity might feel more comfortable purging it further. Third, it, like, it helps create uh, stability in your concentrate. So if you're trying to make things like wax, shatter, uh, butter, crumble, those types of things, stability is quite an important thing. And that you can achieve by further post-processing using the purge mode. Keep in mind stability is also influenced uh, by things like the quality of your material, quality of filtering, uh, the presence of fats, lipids, plant material, uh, the stage of decarb the plant material may actually be in uh, and you know other things strain characteristics are actually very important as well lastly post-production is likely going to be necessary for licensed producers to satisfy any regulatory needs for residual uh, solvents so now let's talk about purge mode and how act how easy it actually is to use you simply take your oil and you put it in the kettle you're going to want to use a secondary uh, containment or mat to put in because as it progresses uh, you don't want it to adhere to the kettle on the sides or on the bottom so use the secondary uh, silicone utensil inside the actual unit once it's in there you choose on the dial in the purge mode between 80 and 100 degrees what temperature you'd like to actually uh, do the purging at. Push the button one time. What's going to happen then is this, the pumps will cycle one time just on and off just to let you know the command was accepted. And then you'll start getting gentle heat in the bottom of the kettle. It's that easy. So there are two easy ways to use purge mode. You can use it as a simple hot plate with no lid, no vacuum, or it can be used as a vacuum oven by adding an auxiliary pump and lid like these. Using purge mode as a hot plate is very easy. Just like I demonstrated, select the temperature, push the button, you get gentle heat, and that's all there is to it. Using purge mode as a vacuum oven is more complicated. Here you'll need the extra equipment I mentioned, a simple vacuum lid that works on an eight and a half inch diameter chamber, and a three CFM two stage pump is probably quite sufficient for your needs. You may also want to add a cold trap to protect the pump and keep the oil clean. It'll increase the longevity of your pump by uh, quite a bit and protect it from the ethanol vapors that you will be purging from the contents um, of your kettle. Vacuum lids are all pretty similar and have the same basic components. The gauge, the vent, and the vacuum port. The gauge allows you to read what vacuum level is being pulled inside the chamber as the vacuum pump is pulling down. Now when you get a new one, you're going to always want to make sure you cut off the diaphragm nipple or pull the pin to let the gauge equalize to your local altitude. The vent obviously allows air to either go in or out, um, either allowing the vacuum line to create the vacuum 
or breaking the vacuum to allow air in. Having a filter is very important so you can keep all contaminants from being sucked in. The vent is also pretty cool because you can, while the pump is running, you can leave the vent just cracked, which we call a bleed, and maintain a lower level of vacuum that's got a continuous flow at all times to kind of vent the chamber as well. It's a little bit advanced, so you might want to just start with a closed valve and let it um, kind of evaporate and then open and burp it and do that kind of cycle. On the, on the vacuum port side, this is very, very important. This can cause some problems for newbies and even experienced people quite often. If there's a negative pressure in this line and this vent is left open, excuse me, I should say vacuum port is left open, the negative pressure can suck oil out of the case and the pump into the chamber and pollute your concentrate. Obviously, you never want that to happen. So the good rule of thumb is always have this vent closed before you turn the vacuum pump off. If you follow that, you won't have a problem with it. Also, if you are going to use a cold trap, which I think is a very good idea and I would recommend, uh, it will protect the oil in your pump and increase the longevity of your pump to stop the vapor from the ethanol vapor from traveling into the pump and degrading the oil. The cold trap will go basically right here in between the lid and the pump. Highly recommend using one. Okay, here are some tips for using purge mode as a vacuum oven. First, you're going to want to elevate the oil a little bit off the bottom so it doesn't get the direct heat and has more ambient heating. Next, before you apply vacuum to it, put the oil in, let it warm up for 30 minutes to an hour so that when you, when you apply the vacuum, it'll have a nice even activity to the concentrate. You're going to see it bubble and muffin, and that's good. But when you apply that vacuum, pay very close attention to the amount of activity that's happening. If it's going crazy and bubbling all over, that's too much. If it's not doing anything, it's not enough. What you want in the beginning is kind of this nice round muffin and see if you can hold this muffin. It looks almost like a parachute because that's going to give you the highest rate of evaporation in the beginning. As the purging goes, goes on, your concentrate is going to become more stable and the activity is going to get less and less. So what you're going to want to do um, is a couple of things. One, periodically you're going to want to burp uh, the chamber, which means allowing air to go in. So you open the vent, allow air to go in, close it, and then reapplying the vacuum. So you have basically fresh air, there, fresh air in there, and you get rid of the ethanol that's trapped in there that may inhibit the faster evaporation of ethanol that's still in the concentrate. Next, you're going to want to flip the slab once in a while, which means taking it out and flipping the concentrate over so the bottom has the ability to evaporate as well as the top side. So that way you get equal evaporation on both sides of the concentrate and stability will be had more quickly. Lastly, be patient and pay attention. These are very important. Uh, for quality post-process purging and high quality output, attention and patience is paramount. Finally, I'd like to conclude with a few very important points. First, never leave the equipment unattended. It's very dangerous because it's very highly flammable electronics, so always pay very close attention to what's going on. Second, always use the equipment within the confines of the law. Third, and most importantly, thank you. We at Extract Craft appreciate your support, your questions, and your interest more than you can imagine. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section or reach out to us at info at extractcraft.com. We love hearing from you, so never hesitate to reach out. Thanks again and stay lifted, crafters.